So we're still in our retool series. We're here in Morgan Hill at the world headquarters for Specialized, hanging out, Aaron Post, retool bike fit genius. And what I'm getting to do is kind of pick his brain about all the questions I have about biking. Now, we are multi-sport athletes. We love to do a little bit of everything. And, and the e-bike has opened the door up. I see pe like old guys who don't have lungs yeah. are suddenly getting three hour rides in. They're not, they're not toxic cardio. It's just been, we're seeing a renaissance in my neighborhood. One of the things though that is tricky about biking, because we see a lot of wobbly knees and feet turned out doing weird yep. stuff, is because I'm not weight bearing through the foot, we know we have 13 muscles that help create external rotation torsion in the hip between the femur and the, and the hip. And what ends up happening then is I derive a lot of stability from the foot on the ground and then the pelvis being stable on, off of that motion that I can create actively. The problem with biking is it does not obey those rules because my legs are basically floating mm -hmm. and subsequently it's harder for me to create the torsion through the foot up the chain to one sometimes create a stable pelvis, right? This is one of the reasons we like people that do a little exercise and bike to help control and teach the hip to control. But the rules around orthotics sometimes change when we're in positions mm -hmm. like this. So I, for example, don't use an orthotic machine. I roll flat, 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 flat. But on the bike, I need a little bit of orthotic. And what I want to talk with you about is this idea because I see a lot of people get a spin shoe. They're trying to up their game off the flat pedal. Mm -hmm. they, they're going, but they don't even realize that their feet are actually behaving a little bit differently in a bike situation than they are yeah. walking or squatting. Am I right? Yeah, there, there's so much more adaptation that happens in walking or running. You're able to plant your foot towards the midline. You're able to recruit that musculature to stabilize when you're off the oh, bike. That's right. I didn't even think about, of course, like I'm running. I'm, I'm not running like that. Right. You get on the bike and we're taking away all of that adaptive ability. You are now fixed bilaterally. You're fixed at the pedals. Even if you're not clipped in, you're still fixed out at the side where your flat pedals are. And you're essentially fixed at the hip on the saddle. But every time you go to push down on the pedal, it's like your foot is striking in bipedal motion and it's collapsing, but you can't adjust anywhere else. And to be fully clear, I, my foot settles on the ground when I'm standing or walking and it collapses and gets into a locked position. Like that's part of how the magic works. It's mm -hmm. not like I always, I'm in this perfect position. I collapse, my foot adjusts to the position, becomes stiff. Yep. And then actually as I work behind me, that, that foot locks up, the toe mm -hmm. becomes a windlass mechanism, and that thing becomes a propulsive plate. Yep. It's a little bit different when I'm not doing that, right? Right, it, all of that collapse is great when you're off the bike, right? Using that leaf spring in your foot to propel yourself forward kind of that absorption and I've got to have motion of, here. I need that absolutely. motion. You need that motion when you're off the bike. Once you're fixed bilaterally though, and you're sitting on a bike and you're pushing power into the pedals, when you're off the bike, your foot's trying to absorb that initial push into the ground, right? But when you're on the bike, you're trying to deliver power into the pedaling system. You think about when you go and you buy a shoe for the first time, or you're thinking about the pedals that you're using, you're thinking, I want a large, stable platform. I want a stiff shoe so that I've got firm, efficient power transfer. This is pretty stiff. Pretty stiff. But you need that stiffness to relate not just to the sole of the shoe, but also to your foot. We want to minimize movement of the foot as you're trying to deliver power into the system to maximize power and efficiency and optimize joint safety. If I can't get a good ground reaction force through the foot, I actually have a harder time creating that stability up through the chain. Mm -hmm. Like trying to push hard on a mattress would be really, or standing on pillows, I'm just mm -hmm. mushing in and my body is gonna keep pushing until it finds those stable positions, right? Yeah, because you're fixed at those two positions, because your foot is out more laterally, as you're pushing down that foot, if it's unsupported, it's still going to collapse. That tibia and your ankle, they're going to dive in and it's going to rotate. And you're going to have all this extra medial lateral movement. Which is, we call gimbling, right? Gimbling, right? It's just not effective motion. No. Like, now I'm just like, this is not the fastest straight power position. 
No, you want to stabilize that knee, resist those torsional forces of the tibia, keep everything moving as close as you can to a piston. Again, it's never going to be perfect. There's going to be some side to side movement, but we want to support the foot and minimize that excessive torsion that's happening in the tibia and up into the knee. Okay, so specialized shoes have a little bit of a, of a little uh, forefoot motion in, right? There's a little bit of a bias or is there a oh, yeah, to the here. foot? So there's collapse that's happening in two different places. You have your arch that's collapsing in medially but there's also a natural angulation across your toes. Again, totally great for walking and running. It right. helps to position that you onto the ball of the foot so that you can return that energy and push off. But again, if you're collapsing here, then your knees wobble side to side. So specialized shoes have a unique feature where there is just a 1.5 millimeter wedge, just, just enough to give you a biomechanical positive response to give you support at the forefoot as well as a little bit of intrinsic arch support built into the sole of the shoe, again, to minimize that collapse that's happening. And be clear, this is a cycle-specific position. Yeah. You know, what we've seen, and I know that ski boots are a whole different kind of conversation, sure. how much the foot move, does the foot move or not, but we were, you're not completely locking in. I mean, I see the, the feet are moving, things are going dynamic, but one of the ways that in which I can create, this is a two plus, right? Mm -hmm. One of the ways that I can create a little bit better reaction between foot and pedal is to maybe talk about like I should think about having some kind of art support insole in my shoe? 100 percent. You know, uh, I don't have all the data on it, but let's just say that most people have arches, right? Not a huge percent of the population is totally flat-footed. And most of those arches are flexible and they collapse. So maybe the little bit of arch support that's built into the shoe already is enough for you. But if you're still feeling movement inside of the shoe, it's not that you bought the wrong size shoe, it's that you just don't have the right amount of support built up to match the natural contour of your foot. So we make those footbeds in three different heights, low, medium, and high, or red, blue, and green. You've got the blue two plus right there in the middle. That's most people are gonna be happy with that. But if you needed a little bit more, you could go even higher. Very nice. So, you know, in short, because what we're trying to do here, again, is take Formula One. You fit the kids in the Tour de France. Yeah. I mean, Bora is a specialized, you know, they mm -hmm. ride specialized bikes. So the, the conversation then is, I'm not going to be that. Those people, those people are savages. I have all these crazy cyclists in my life. But as a, as a person who likes to spin, mm -hmm. who likes to use the bike for fitness, I can still get a lot of bang for the buck in terms of improving my mechanics and getting more power out of it, which is honestly what I really care about, if I maybe just add a simple insult. Yeah, I, it's the thing I like talking about the most because it is the easiest connection that we have from the things that make us more comfortable on the bike are the same things that will make us more powerful. And the footbed is the best example of this. It disperses load over a greater area, so it makes your shoe feel more comfortable. It simultaneously reduces excessive movement, so you're pushing more power into the pedals. Amazing. You know, uh, I love it. I love it. You know, again, the goal, whether you're on Zwift, whether you're on Sufferfest, yeah. whether you're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're a trainer road kid, you know, it turns out maybe you can be, uh, be a little more effective. Absolutely. Specialized retool.